Good to meet you. Stool Entertainment doing another Red Dead Redemption 2 video. And on my pursuit to 100%, I have to do all the challenges. One of the challenges that was not opening for me was the Survivalist Challenge. And the reason it wasn't opening is you have to catch a bluegill in order to start the Survivalist challenges and then you have to catch three bluegills once i realized that i said i'm going to document this and put together a video as it turns out one of them was really nasty it was the um number seven kill eight small game animals with consecutive shots using small game arrows and I turned Copperhead Landing into a kill zone because, yeah, it was nasty. But let's get on with the survivalist challenges. And I'm going to start with number one. This involves fishing. So in order to start it, I went up to Cattail Pond and started fishing for bluegill because you need one bluegill to start the whole challenge. Ha, got you. Ah, bluegill. Nice. And now Arthur just needs to catch two more bluegill at Cattail Pond in order to finish the first survivalist challenge. Bluegill, okay. That easy. Number two is hand five animals in to Pearson at camp or the trapper. And again, condition doesn't matter. And fish count as animals. So, isn't that interesting? Since I'm by Cattail Pond, I decide to take a Rocky Mountain Bighorn as the first creature that I'm going to give to Pearson. Table awaits your offerings, Mr. Morgan. I will. Looking pretty well stocked now. I handed in the ram and three bluegill, four of five animals handed in to camp or trapper. I ended up handing in three more fish and a deer. The deer really wasn't necessary, and the fish were too, too many. But in the end, I completed survivalist challenge number two. Number three is kill five animals with the varmint rifle. So I decided to head down to Dewberry Creek, old greenback mill over here. There's a possum, and then you usually can find a bunch of small animals in the area. Grab the varmint rifle and head down to Green Bank Mill here. There's a guaranteed possum, and I'll leave a link to the video in the description. Now, Dewberry Creek at night is very rich with animals like skunks, um, raccoons, lots of critters to kill with the varmint rifle. 
but the rain kind of made it difficult for Arthur and things weren't working out very well. After a while of running around, I managed to get these two chipmunks and at least things don't have to be consecutive because I missed a few attempts and that would have reset a counter. Yeah, I ran into a huge issue with number seven, but I'll get to that. So next I went and got some rabbits. And that's it. I killed five varmints with a varmint rifle. Next up would be to craft all arrow types. And hey, that should be easy. I thought I had all of the, um, how shall I say, necessary ingredients for the uh, small game arrow, etc. But yeah, that turned out to be a little bit of a problem as well. Now, you would think that. I would have had all the necessary ingredients. I managed to craft a small game arrow and an improved arrow, etc. But I was missing some feathers. So I had to go find some feathers. Feathers in hand, I craft a fire arrow and don't craft a dynamite arrow like an idiot. So then I have to recamp and, well, I craft a poison arrow as well, but I don't craft a dynamite arrow. What the hell? And I had the feathers, but I didn't craft. So I had to recamp. And, well, craft a dynamite arrow. complete. And now on to survivalist challenge number five. Catch a fish in the bayou from a riverboat and while standing on railroad tracks. That is a lot of fun. Let's see if anything's biting. Well, that's the first part. Now we have to do it from a boat in the bayou. First of all, you got to find a boat on La Graz that you can use to get into the swamp. And I found this one right here. And it's a cabin kind of out jutting. And I use that to row out into the swamp and do my fishing. Now you got to set the lure up and uh, put bait on. In this case, it doesn't matter what type of fish you catch. You just need to catch a fish from a boat in the swamp. So you put on the swamp lure and put any damn bait you want on it. Button, I wonder. I got it. And there you have it. Number six is kill a scavenging animal while it is feeding on a corpse. And you got to kill five animals. And then number seven comes along. And that's where I had some issues. Since the bayou is near Copperhead Landing, I decided that's where I'm going to set up my killing scavenging animals 
and that is going to be done real simple with you got to get a corpse first for animals to scavenge on and i'm going to do that with the dynamite arrow There is my corpse, and now it's just a matter of time before you can find some scavenging animals, and I'm going to use the varmint rifle to kill them. They're usually small. Now, it's only a matter of time before animals come to the corpse, and there is a crow, which I can take out with the varmint rifle, and that is my first I killed one raven and then got one in flight, which really doesn't count. But now you can just leave the pile of corpses build up and you get more scavengers. A crow shows up and I decide to take it down with a dynamite arrow. Awesome. And that does count. It was scavenging. And if you look at the progress on the challenges, the Let's see, Sharpshooter, that's not the one. Um, yeah, Survivalist, I've racked up three animals. It takes some time. you got to be patient. Sometimes you're better off, um, how shall I put it, setting up uh, multiple corpses in different areas and taking down any scavenging animals around those corpses. And I did take down... Two, arrow, two more ravens with an explosive arrow, which helped out. There were multiple ravens, and I just took them out. That qualified. Number seven, kill eight, small game with consecutive shots using small game arrows. That was the one I had the most issues with. After I went back to St. Denis for a day or so, I came back to Copperhead Landing to try and get this complete. The problem is, if you miss, it resets. And I kept trying to kill small animals, set up corpses to bring scavengers in. Yeah, it was a mess. I turned Copperhead Landing into a, well, how shall I say, killing zone with lots of dead animals lying around. Yeah, it was not good. It kind of felt, well, how would Arthur put it? I've been killing animals just for the hell of it. So I did some research on YouTube, and I found a solution to this. And now I'm going to show you that solution. The easiest solution I found... Come to Emerald Ranch, come right up here on this hill, and start killing chickens. Now, they count. 
as small animals. If you take a look at the challenge here, and go to the survivalist challenge, we got so far four. I need four more chickens killed. Now that everything is complete, witness to animal cruelty, I want to try and pick up all my small game arrows, try and pluck some chickens, but I'm better off running off and, uh, how shall I say, fleeing the area and only paying a bounty. The next is to craft a bunch of stuff, which I will show you in the next part of this video. But Arthur must get away. Arthur is now far enough away. The investigation is going down. So let's check progress on the challenge here. And I have to craft a homing tomahawk, an improved tomahawk, volatile dynamite, and volatile fire bottle. That's easy enough. I have all the ingredients, I think. So... Once the investigation totally disappears, I can just camp and craft. I did the two tomahawks, but I couldn't do the volatile uh, fire bottle or volatile dynamite. And I'm like, what the hell? I know I had the pamphlets for them. So, yeah, what's going on here? Well, I'll let you know. Okay, I'm checking the recipe pamphlets. And I do, see, that's, I do have the fire bottle but now let's see let's scroll down uh yeah got the volatile fire department yep volatile fire bottle pamphlet i open it up i take a look um i'm gonna read it moonshine animal fat how to prepare. Well, that shouldn't be a problem. If I set up the campfire, I should be able to create it. I got moonshine. I got everything I need. So, yeah. And then the volatile dynamite. 
I read that. I got everything I need. Animal fat, high velocity cartridge, dynamite. What's going on here? Well, in order to craft a volatile firebomb, you get a pamphlet. You actually have to read it. Now, I didn't have any more moonshine, so I couldn't make up a volatile firebomb. But I'm wondering, why can't I make the dynamite? Well, it turns out I actually had made volatile dynamite, and you only can make eight pieces of dynamite. And I already had eight volatile dynamites made. So, yeah, I actually had to toss one of the dynamites. Now, with that number down to seven, I can craft a volatile dynamite and win this challenge. See right there, easy enough to craft. It's created. I'm going to leave. And it says survivalists after I tear down the campfire. Complete. Now, number nine, catch a fish that weighs at least 19 pounds and I can show you how to do that easily. You travel to Van Horn and if it's in the evening or night you rent a room at the worst hotel in Red Dead Redemption 2. The Van Horn room in whatever this is the Van Horn in I don't know and you sleep until morning. You come down to the fishing spot where you might catch the legendary muskie and you put out your river lure, your special river lure, and you put on some, I think I'm going to use the cricket, and I got my special river lure, and I'm going to try and catch a nice big muskie. You're a fine looking musky. You're coming with me. And you can use this area as the starting point of trying to catch one of each type of fish throughout the world. Now you have to catch 15 different fishes, and I'm going to show you each of them, how I caught them, a little bit of it, and then the end of this challenge.
And that's the first of 15. So 14 more fish to go, and I'll show you the ones you need to catch throughout this video and the final end to this survivalist challenge. I'm at Willard's Rest. If you ride past Ansburg, north of Van Horn, you can come here and you can, at the Kamasa River, find at least four of the fish you're going to need to complete the final survivalist challenge. Okay. What are you? You're a bass. Maybe. Here we go. I'm fishing, got some. What are you? Pickerel. Okay, I decided to move further north of the location I was at. I was on the opposite side of the railroad bridge, so I moved further north. To try and catch a fish here. This could work. Perch. I tried some different baits and stuff, but didn't have any luck, so I moved a little further south. Okay. After catching that bluegill, that was about all the luck I had. I was pulling in various fish that I've already caught, so I decided to move on the next day. I headed south to the swamp and Lakay area and trying to fish for catfish, etc. And I managed to get lucky with this fish.
the next fish after this, I was really kind of happy that Arthur managed to catch it because it's a big fish. That's it. Come on. Good to meet you. With the long nosed gar. I decided to move on to a different area to try and catch a different type of fish. Bad at all. With these big fish, you can only put one on the back of your horse. So if you're intending to catch large fish, eat them, process them and move on, which is what I'm going to do with another fish. I was following the Dakota River trying to catch some river fish, and this is the one that I finally caught. Go oh, now, I'm fishing. Got some. And that's about the only thing I caught, besides some stuff I'd already caught before. So on to some other fish. This is at Cattail Pond, and you can catch some really good fish here. It's actually very diverse in the amount of fish you can catch. So let's see how, oop, looks like Arthur has something and it's going to fight him. Look at you. Mmm, the pack. Real tough. Yeah, I decided to move on after catching this one because I was actually catching pike. Lots of them. And some other fish that I had caught before. So yeah, I moved on. This is actually by Clements Point, by the camp area, and you can catch smallmouth bass in this area. Whoa, okay. Arthur, my boy. I'm keeping you, I'm afraid. This is the far northeastern area of Flatiron Lake, 
And this is where you can catch steelhead trout. You, sir, are a fish. Now to deal with the annoying ass dog that was uh, harassing me this entire time. Apparently you can't rope and hog tie dogs. Anyway, now we're moving on to the final three fish. This is the furthest west on Flatiron Lake where the river merges in. And as you can see, I'm using vision, the vision power, hunting vision, with a rod in hand to see fish. And now to head south and catch a final catfish before catching the final fish. There's this boat that juts out into the Kassam River, I believe. And yeah, like I said, I'm locating the fish using the hunting power, vision power. And there is the big catfish. But don't fish off this boat because... You won't be able to take the fish with you when you catch it. Well, you're on, my friend. Well, look at you. You're coming with me. Don't go fishing off this parked riverboat. You can't bring your fish with you, and it sucks after all that work. Let's get on with the final fish, though. The final fish is the sockeye salmon, and it is at Okriji's Run. And yeah, it's a difficult fish to catch. No, oh, now I'm fishing. Got some. Well, look at you. And that's it for the survivalist challenge. It turned out to be a lot harder than I had thought. I mean, trying to kill animals, catch fish. Yeah, like I said, Okriji's run by the Veterans Homestead is where you can get the sockeye salmon. Let's take a look at the progress. Um, yeah, break down the fishing pole, and I am done. Again, let's look at the progress. The survivor's challenge is complete, and I am closer than ever to 100%. I'm Brad, proprietor of Barstool Entertainment. If you found this video interesting or helpful, hit the thumbs up button. Uh, feel free to leave some comments. If you like this type of video, hit the subscribe button and bell icon. I post four video game related videos a week and you don't want to miss out. And this is by far the longest video I have posted. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and thanks for stopping by.